Hello everybody, it's Defense Mechanism, and I'm back for another tutorial. It's actually the same tutorial, except it's slightly changed, because we've got a new version of LSDJ out, and it seems like this one is going to be out for a little while. It is version 6.8.2, and it is now stable. So, some things have changed from the previous kick tutorial. Hopefully not a lot. Um, I'm just going to go over from scratch how I do this again, and... Uh, Hopefully you'll find it helpful. I've received a couple requests to update the kick tutorial. And uh, the LSDJ manual itself hasn't quite been updated yet. So um, I figured it would probably be a good idea to cover. So with uh, right away, I'm just going to make a new wave instrument. I've done that already. Uh, I'm going to set it to manual so that the waveform doesn't change. And then I'm going to come up to this PLV uh, setting. This is where we are dealing with how the P or L or V commands operate. So with fast, uh, and we've got up and down controls the different types, and then left and right controls the different shapes here that we've got. So we've got basically saw, square, and triangle, or sign. Um, and then we've got fast, tick, and step. And then if you go up one more, you have drum. So covering these briefly, drum is like the drum pitch from the last version. Um, it provides that nice exponential slope so that we can spend less time in the high registers and more time in the low registers. And what's different about this uh, version and the drum pitch is that uh, we don't have a DRM max setting anymore. You can actually just tune the notes directly in the phrase. Fast is the default, like high frequency vibrato, fast uh, pitch shifting, pitch sliding, and uh, legato or um, portamento or um, note slides. Uh, tick is the slow version of the P and L commands, and and V command as well. And step, uh, the V command is is fast for this one, and I. I I think the L command is also, but the P command will step the pitch in intervals instead of doing the pitch slide. It will just shift it once. So we're just going to set this to drum. We have our transpose switch back, and I'm going to turn this off so that if I have a bass line and a kick in the same phrase, uh, when I transpose the phrase, it'll only transpose the bass line so I can keep my kick tuned at the same pitch and it doesn't shift all over the place. Um, the wave synth screen, this one might be slightly different uh, than the previous one. We, ha we have this limiter here, which is kind of nice. Uh, maybe not necessarily for a kick if you want your kick to be really loud, but if you didn't want your kick to be loud, you could limit the volume of it. We've got this Q setting that now is previously at the top here, but now we can change the Q from the start to the end point. So uh, I'm going to just uh, use the filter to create a waveform that looks like a kick. These, this can go uh, however you want it to. If you set the cue pretty low, you'll get more of a sine or triangle shape. If you set the cue higher, you'll get more of a square shape. Um, I usually like it somewhere in between, a little bit like a clipped sign. Um, but it depends on the song and mixing and all kinds of other things. So, so I've got the kick waveform that I want. Um, <laughs> I can tune this usually, depending on the song again, I usually tune it maybe around C7 or C6. Some people like to go a little bit lower, like C5. Um, to set the pitch table up, this is basically the same as it was previously. I'm going to set a fast pitch uh, command on the first tick, and then from there I'm going to transpose it all the way down to... Uh, the lowest pitch possible using an L command. And the reason I like to do this, um, you can use a P command here if you want, but I just like to do it so that the pitch doesn't wrap in case something changes in the song. So let's see how this sounds. I think that that's, that's a good starting place. Um, and I think something else I did in the last video was that I put the volume down to zero and I put this at, I put this E command over here. Um, that can kind of just mute a little bit of this top transient if you go up really high with the kick pitch. The lower you go, I think the less you really need it. So 
um, it's because there's a little bit of delay when you set the volume, so the the pitch actually starts uh, a little bit after the very first pitch, so it just kind of eliminates any lingering transient that's really high uh, in the high end. Um, and then from there, you can sort of just... I'm going to put this back up here. It's got a little bit of snappiness. Um, what I was also going to say is this TSP column doesn't work. Even though we've got, we've, we can tune the pitch in the phrase, the TSP column in the table uh, doesn't work for the drum pitch the same way that it works for fast pitch. So some people like to start their kicks with a little octave transpose up. And I mean, the way that I kind of handle this is I tune it to where I want it to start, and then I use a fast P command to to get it to make it go down, um, rather than uh, relying on the octave transpose here. Uh, but if you did want an octave transpose, you may want to just try like one um, or two, because when you're um, at the very top of the range with the exponential pitch curve, uh, even just one note could be an octave above where you are currently. Um, so I would say maybe one or two, just small values and try to tune by ear. If you were going to try to put a little transpose on the top of the kick, um, I, again, I don't really find it necessary if I try it. You can already hear like even just one, it makes a really drastic transient at the top of that kick. It's not something I have really find that I need, just because I tend to think of a kick mostly in the low end and with a little bit of snap in the high end. Um, if we try to tune this even higher, like all the way up, you can... Um, I think that gives a pretty good... that gives a pretty good transient and then from there you can sort of tune you know by ear so uh, it gives you some flexibility uh, depending on tempos and things like that in your song depending on where what the other volume of the channels are like um, you may have to sort of customize it make it your own do something different um, so I hope this helps if you've got any questions let me know um, and I hope to hear you making some really cool stuff. Thanks for watching.